Okay, so this is the uh, lecture on UMTS architecture. Now the prime uh, reference for this lecture is chapter 5 uh, from the Holma text. So it's called Radio App Access Network Architecture and this chapter gives uh, quite a wide overview of the UMTS system architecture. Uh, and the logical elements and the interfaces that comprise the UMTS network architecture. What are we going to do today? Well, uh, we're going to focus on the release 99 architecture. Okay, now in terms of the UMTS architecture, uh, the first um, release of the UMTS architecture was called the release uh, 99 architecture because it was it came out in 1999 uh, and subsequent releases are called release 4, release 5, release 6 and so forth. So we're going to look at the release 99 architecture because if once you understand the release 99 architecture quite well then to understand release 4 and release 5 and 6 it becomes much more easier. Now uh, so let's get started on that. Now whenever we talk about the architecture of a network whether it be a, in the UMTS network architecture or the architecture of a GSM network or the architecture of a GPRS network there are two uh, primarily building blocks in the network architecture. The first one are network elements and network elements are, have well defined functions. Uh, so if you look at the specifications, the 3GPP specifications, only the functions of network elements are defined. The way, uh, the way you implement them is not defined. So different operator, different vendors can implement network elements differently. But as long as the, the functions that they are supposed to perform are performed by that network element, then that is fine. The second aspect apart from network, elephant, uh, network elements is the interfaces. So between different network elements there are interfaces. These interfaces and the types of messages that are sent between these interfaces are well standardized. Okay? Because uh, you want to make sure that if you buy maybe a BTS from one vendor and maybe a BSC or an MSC from another vendor, all of the messages that flow on the interface between these two network elements are all well standardized, they all conform to the standard. So the standard specifies how many bits are there in each uh, field of a protocol and what does each field stand for and so forth and when are different protocols, uh, when are different messages sent and so forth. So there is a big difference between the way network elements are specified and the way interfaces are specified. Interfaces are specified very much in detail and all vendors have to ensure that any message that they send on these interfaces follow the standards uh, very clearly. So it basically what it will enable is it will enable uh, an operator who, who may buy one piece of equipment from one vendor and another piece of equipment from another vendor and these two pieces of equipment can talk to each other. Okay, now if you look at uh, the UMTS architecture there are th essentially three building blocks here. Okay, so the first building block is called the user equipment. Okay. And that's the thing that you carry in your hand. Okay, and the user equipment is uh, consists of uh, a mobile equipment, and there's a, uh, something called a USIM inside it. The second piece of equipment is called the radio access network, or UTRAN, UMTS Terrestrial Radio Access Network. The third component in the network architecture is the core network. Now, both the UTRAN as well as the user equipment are uh, from our new brand new uh, if you look at the evolution uh, of mobile networks from GSM to GPRS and then to UMTS you see that both the user equipment and UTRAN are new elements because they are going to be based on 
wideband CDMA which did not exist before. The core network, a lot of the network elements from uh, previous GPRS networks or 2.5G networks have, and also from the GSM networks have been inherited in the core network. So the core networks perform functions such as switching, routing, charging and uh, data traffic, uh, routing of data traffic through the network to the appropriate external network to which the packets are going to or the appropriate uh, external network to which the time slots should be switched to. Uh, so as I said the core network is in some way inherited from a second generation mobile communication system with some minor modifications. And also all of the databases that you had in uh, second generation mobile networks such as the HLR, the VLR, EIR, all of those databases are also inherited uh, from uh, the 2G network. Now, if, let's go a little bit deeper into this. Now, remember in the early stages of UMTS implementation, uh, the GSM network and the UMTS networks are going to coexist. Okay, and that's what's shown in this part of the diagram. Here you have the user equipment on this side here. Okay, this is the older GSM GPRS based handset and this is a new UMTS handset. Uh, you have the existing GSM and edge based radio access network and that is referred to as GRAN, GSM edge radio access network. And then you have the new uh, UMTS terrestrial radio access network or UTRAN on this part. Okay. So these two form the radio access network. So you can have uh, both these networks coexisting uh, for a major for, for a long period of time for the next couple of years in most countries these two networks will coexist because it's almost impossible to get everybody off a GSM network into a UMTS network and also uh, operators have invested a lot of money in the existing GSM network and those GSM networks will continue to uh, operate. In the core network, as I said, the core network is something that is uh, inherited from uh, second generation and 2.5G. Uh, you have to make small enhancements so that it can work better with the, with the new uh, UTRAN based network. So if you look at the core network, the core network is divided into three parts. The first part is the circuit switch domain that provides the circuit switch services like your uh, voice uh, calls and so forth. And then you have your packet switch domain at the bottom here. So the packet switch domain here provides your packet switch services. So all the IP packets will be going either from the GPRS network or from the UMTS network to the packet switch domain and out to an IP based network. You also have some network elements that are common to the circuit switch and packet switch elements. So all of the databases that you have in a network such as your HLR, VLR, EIR, all, all of those network elements are all inside this block here which are because they are common to both circuit switch as well as packet switch elements. And then there are other network elements that are used to provide intelligent network services that are, that are also going to be uh, common, anything to do with providing services to, to users. Okay, now if you if we look further into the UTRAN network, and this is uh, figure 5.2 from the chapter, chapter 5 uh, of the Holma text, uh, they have started going a little bit deeper into each one of the blocks. So we said that you had the UE, UE block here. So this is the UE block. And inside the UE block, you have the mobile equipment, the handset, and inside the handset, there's also something called a USIM. The, the SIM card in the UMTS network is slightly more enhanced than the SIM card that you had in the um, previous GSM GPRS networks. If you start looking at the UTRAN network, inside the UTRAN network you have uh, base stations which are called node Bs and the node Bs communicate with the user equipment and you also have RNCs. Okay, so the node B 
is similar to the BTS in GSM and the RNCs are similar to the BSCs in the GSM world. The only difference is uh, previously uh, in a GSM network all the RNCs had, if, if one RNC had to communicate with another RNC, it had to go via the uh, MSC. But now there is a new link, a new interface that has been specified between RNCs. So you can see that this link here, which I'm drawing in red, is called the IUR interface. Okay, and the IUR interface enables one RNC to communicate with another RNC, and that is used for uh, an important feature called, no, more specifically. Sorry. Why do we have this interface between one RNC and another RNC? Okay, for a number of functions, but the, one of the main functions is something called soft handovers. Okay, um, so uh, that's the uh, the IUR interface. Okay, now this is the UTRAN and this is the core network. A very simple model of the core network. The actual core network is far more complex than this, but the core network has the MSC VLR from the GSM network and the GMSC, the gateway MSC through which your calls go out to the PSTN network or to another public LAN mobile network. And then you have the SGSN and the GGSN which are from the GPRS network and these are the ones that are used for routing packets from packet, uh, for packet switch services out to the internet. And then you have the HLR, which is the database, the HLR, VLR, no, sorry, the HLR, EIR, the authentication center, all of those three main databases which are shared uh, between the packet switch domain and the circuit switch domain. Then out through the GGSN, you go out through the to the internet. Okay, any questions with this one? Okay, let's just take this diagram and draw it a little bit more detail. And this is a slightly more detailed diagram. Again, same same concept. Um, if you if you turn it down, you've got the user equipment at the bottom. Okay, you've got the UTRAN above it, and you've got the core network at the top. Okay, uh, so you have uh, a user communicating with node B's, your base stations, and node B's communicating with RNCs. And here's the IUR interface between one RNC and another RNC. The interface between the uh, between the user and the node B is referred to as a UU interface. Okay, as opposed to what was it in GSM? What is this interface called in GSM between the user and the base station? UM interface. Okay, so this was a UM interface in GSM and now in UMTS is referred to as U, U interface and between node B and R and C that is referred to as a IUB interface. Uh, what was it? Uh, anybody knows what it was in the, the interface between the um, BTS and the BSC? What, what was it called in the A? Okay, a, a, so there is an ATA or ABIS, okay, because there is a transcoder as well, okay, so the, the correct one is ABIS, okay, ABIS is the interface between the uh, BTS and the BSC, and then be, between the BSC and the transcoder, you have the ATA interface, okay, and the transcoder and the, and then the MSC, okay, so the, the, one of the differences that happens here in, uh, in um, what do you call it? In UMTS, is the RNC is effectively performing what the BSC and the PCU perform together. Okay, so the RNC separates the packet switch traffic and the circuit switch traffic. The circuit switch traffic goes towards the MSC uh, via something called a media gateway, and the packet switch traffic from the RNC goes to the SGSN. Okay, so and from the SGSN, 
the packet switch traffic goes to the GGSN which, which acts like a router to an external network and then you have your connections to the internet. Okay, so this is a, uh, again another model. Uh, okay, so uh, now what I want you to do as an exercise, let's take a short break here. As an exercise, I want you to do question one on the sheet that I've given you just now. 